welcome to readings for the 21st of December 2021. This is the Astro Transit Fusion Tarot Read. Um, using here cards that I set up. And then we will do a reading later. Now we use only the Minor Arcana, but I will pull one court card to represent any one person that might be involved uh, from the outside. So first I'd like to look at the transits in the sky. And right now we'll just focus on Aquarius, the star card we probably mostly know. So think about this as we see that the world, which represents Saturn, is now in Aquarius and Jupiter is vastly moving through, but still in Aquarius. Saturn at 10, it's going to be there for a while, it takes its time. Jupiter apparently is on a mission, but I believe it's very powerful right now. Personally, it's exactly on my uh, progress sun, so it's no little thing for me, especially being a Sagittarius myself. And have a Jupiter in Sagittarius. So um, I got to say, in terms of this Jupiter at 28 degrees, and I'll pull a card for each planet. That'll be our reading to see how maybe Tarot has some insight to how it might play. How it plays for us is exactly in terms of astrology. How does it aspect um, different planets? And what is its relationship? It's always about relationships uh, to the rest of the chart. But I keep an eye on Jupiter because that's where things are going to start popping from. And I kind of think even Saturn's in the mood. You know, this the 29th is the banging day. It's coming. Uh, it's, um, I, I can't wait to kind of do that reading. What is today? So um, it'd probably be a little bit longer reading because I think like uh, we'll definitely look at the, all the plants in the sky and all the different signs it will have a little better spread i mean it's been a tight bowl uh and putting uh, energy in a certain uh, aspect if you watch some of my earlier readings uh i think like when you have a bowl i sort of have a bowl you know you you always think well it focuses energy where those planets are well yeah but i think it's like a parabolic <laughs> uh you know radar it's like uh it's that bowl is kind of focusing out on the other kind of you could say side of the zodiac so if my bowl you know is in the first and second house and it's like the purpose of the energy being focused there is to uh, project that energy into that other side of the chart i mean that'd be like the natural way to kind of balance things um so i was thinking that too the way the charts have been um and the moon's moved out of Cancer now, and I wanted to, why I wanted to bring this in, uh, because we get to see the strength card now, um, with the moon uh, being in Leo today, this morning, right when you woke up, if you're watching this on the 22nd, and the moon's always, we want to show, represented by the high priestess, so always about, not our emotions, but uh, our connection to our higher self our intuition, our psychic self, uh, you know, a lot of that's around the moon. It's not all just Pluto in the eighth house. Uh, our moon by itself can just be like this psychic entity. With, uh, I mean, the moon and sun is the most power, no? And I always want to bring up right here what I think about Jupiter. I think about the Saturn square Uranus. We'll all come together uh, on the 29th, and I'll just keep doing these piecemeal until then. But you have the Sagittarius card here, Temperance. You really want to look at that, the angel here. Boy, I'm feeling the angelic guidance. But now also, Mars is the tower. And, you know, as an astrologer, you know Mars is the trigger. It's typically moving pretty fast. Uh, it's not moving so fast now for Mars. But typically, but however, it's the trigger. When you see Mars hitting something, you know, by aspect, uh, something, it's, uh, you know, that's what, like, literally like the finger pulling the trigger, like on a gun. Uh, and you might could set it all up by looking at the outer transits and how things are working and you're progressed. 
And, but then would you want to look, okay, for two years, this is going to be happening, or God forbid it's your your seventh, your marriage is stressed. Well, when's is it going to, when's the trigger going to come? When's it really going to bang, go bang? And you're going to look at Mars during that two year period and look for a trigger coming or, you know, off to Mercury. But Mars is setting up now, and it already is loosely, a sextile to Saturn, okay? And I think this is so important because the third Saturn square on the 29th, when Jupiter is zero degrees, it, we're going to have to move it out of Aquarius and into Pisces, okay? Um, it's going to be a nice sextile exactly to Saturn, which will be exactly opposite Uranus. And remember, I mean, I'm a Sagittarius. This is the great benefic here. Sagittarius is the home of Jupiter here anyway. So it has a natural affinity, you see, for Jupiter. It's reaching in a sextile into its to its own uh, uh, planet, even though that's not going to be an orb. It's at zero degrees. Going into Pisces, then you have a really tight connection, exact connection at some point, right? Right at that time with Saturn in that opposition and i think with mars this it's right now this is a time and i'm feeling this where we can assert our will in saturn you know which saturn it gives us leeway but it always wants structure and growth you know um it it wants to build and it wants to see strength and all of that a responsibility but so long as we're moving in that direction you know, it, it isn't a uh, Nazi, <laughs> you know, uh, and Jupiter here is just absolutely breaking free. So I think this is a great time with this Mars and Sagittarius. Uh, you know, Mars and Sagittarius is, uh, it can be kind of crazy. It can be uh, out really out of the box thinking put into action. It can be like, it can be really crazy. It can be someone saying, I think I'm going to do it. And, you know, I don't, everyone else is like, I don't think you should just step off that cliff. Well, because remember, it's agitary. It's always about belief. I pretty much believe I can step off this uh, cliff and survive. Well, you die. But, you know, that's that's the belief. That's Sagittarius. But also that's Mars. So in Mars in the first house, particularly in Sagittarius, opinion, my opinion, with the Sagittarius, like, uh, because Sagittarius are not even warriors, but Mars, the first house, Sagittarius is a warrior. And Mars always carries the energy of the first house. That's Mars, right? Aries always carries Aries energy everywhere it goes by the nature of being Mars. And Aries is trying also to Sagittarius, naturally. And so there's an affinity there. So I think we have a time here where we can come up with not only some kind of breakout thinking, I think that might be what uh, Mars and Mercury have been talking about, quote-unquote, where they've been conjuncting over the past couple months in various signs, Libra and Scorpio, okay? Uh, so this is a breakout time, you know, where we can really uh, get out of the box and even do something that surprises ourselves And with the support of spirit, I'm telling you how I'm feeling it, you know, and right now, uh, hopefully you're feeling this, because what we see here, too, uh, is the straight card. It's such a beautiful straight card, this deck here. Uh, the ethereal visions, illuminated tarot. It's the youngest strength woman I've ever seen. And um, you're going to have that another day. I mean, my, my mood's in cancer. It's always the worst time of the month for me, ironically. I don't know. It's just too much for me, too much. Yeah, I have a lot of my energy in, in the fourth house, too, on the IC, so it's like, you know, but uh, typically with uh, Leo Moon, it brings uh, strength, it brings vitality, it brings optimism, it brings positivity. Um, it's really a good energy we can look forward to for a few days here. And uh, as we kind of get a whirl... And we're building up to that last Saturn, uh, Uranus Square. I guess there's more to come, but I think this has been this year. We're seeing it's banging away. It depends on the house. For me, it's the third house to the ninth house. So uh, you have to see. I'm a Virgo rising. Could hit you similarly as me if that's the case. 
Uh, but uh, thank you guys for that part of the reading, and I'll put a time stamp, 10, good, <laughs> at 10, and if uh, you're hanging in there, I'm going to do a tarot reading now, pre-shuffle, pull it from the deck, forgive my voice, I know it must sound like Charlie Brown's teacher, but fuck it all, nothing works, I'll just stop taking all this damn cold medicine or allergy medicine, <clears throat> it's going to let it work itself out, it's just I can't hardly talk, I can't breathe out of my nose. I hate, I hate being a mouth breather, my God. I won't go there with what my joke. But uh, Ace of Cups, now, what is this? Clarify uh, Saturn here. Ace of Cups, you know. I'm going to tell you with Saturn, uh, Saturn can bring gifts, you know, but it brings, uh, op not opportunities, it brings work, uh, and it brings structure. Uh, and it brings stability. So when Saturn brings a gift, it brings stability. That's the main thing here. And love. And with the Ace of Cups in this position, it's not a player. It's not shallow energy. This is about you. Uh, and somehow Saturn, that's in Aquarius now, 10 degrees, it's going to be moving through there. And for Saturn at a good clip, till it eclipses, everything's going to start moving. So this could be love. You know, I've had it happen to be a lot with Saturn. I'd be at Saturn uh, in my fifth house in Capricorn. Uh, but when it brings something, it's a, a deeply felt uh, a feeling uh, of a commitment, uh, something that's coming to stay. Either you're going to be feeling that, and it looks to me like someone's going to be offering that to you. So now another way this could play out too, though, is like maybe that's kind of all they offer. Like for you, maybe you look at them and you're not attracted to them. This could be too, because I do see this someone coming in with a really solid offering of love. Just love. I really wasn't seeing this as a relationship reading, guys. Just a general reading. And now with the Wheel of Fortune, now it's at uh, Jupiter represents now. So remember, this is the reading. So Jupiter's about to leave. Aquarius and go into Pisces and here's the eight of cups so this is about emotionally leaving something behind and this ace of cups is coming in I gotta think like what's gonna happen though uh Jupiter will clear the slate clear the plate you know clear the runway when it wants to bring something so I'm not just saying this try to be optimistic I really think this is indicating an emotional one-two punch. And this is your personal energy. This is someone bringing this energy to you here with this Ace of Cups. And with Jupiter, this is you really letting go of something, you know. Um, and releasing yourself emotionally. And with the Ace of Cups coming to the world, too, there's also a structure. So... If you have in any way gone through any period where you haven't had the structure you wanted, you have this is feeling of Ace of Cups in the world. This is feeling emotionally whole, emotionally strong, emotionally grounded. And honestly, it's because you deserve it. We all do, but you've somehow earned it. You you've learned something. You've created this state of being emotionally. Uh, in control and I think as part of that you're going to be letting go of uh, things that don't serve you it's cliche but I think that's 100% what this is I see Jupiter here it's the great benefic it's it's really powerful now 28 29 degrees um, and I think it's just gonna right here in Aquarius wherever that is in your charts I mean it's banging some powerful energy and karmic energy and karmic as in not necessarily bad it may be, uh, you know, karma's just karma. It's constant. It's like just, uh, you know, really, it's a manifestation. It's an action, right? So uh, a lot of things could be popping for people. Now let's look at our strength card here. As we look at Leo, this is a short-term influence. In a few days, we'll see what the cards, you know, that'll be switching over to the hermit. You know, a whole different feeling. Um but with the moon, uh, I see it as being triggering. So it's triggering something for you. Um, with the high priestess, too, representing the moon. 
I think it could be uh, triggering something like from with a dream. Perhaps you have a dream that's meaningful. It could be this reading, but it would be something uh, uh, in your mind, a thought that comes to mind, something that you read, something that uh, uh, triggers you, that feels like some kind of healing. It might actually precede this letting go or be a part of this letting go emotionally of whatever it was that wasn't serving you. You know, Saturn is the world, so it's like if you want to get to the top and get to the next level and level up, like you got to go through Saturn. I think that's how it works. You know, what the hell uh, is what it is. Uh, souls, they say, you know, enter and leave uh, through Saturn. So I'm dipped it out with Saturn. I'm headstrong. I told Saturn, fuck you, Saturn. You know what? You'll be gone in a few billion years. Who knows, you know? So I'm an eternal thing. I was never born, never die. You're not the boss of me. You're just the boss of my body, so fuck off. Now, did that end well for me? No, no not really. But fuck you, Saturn, again. Anyway, <laughs> we're looking at the Aquarius here. And the Five of Pentacles comes up for this one. Remember, I'm trying to look here at our personal energy, how it's relating to these energy. So if, like, we really here right now is not the time, and I'm guilty of this. I gotta say, I'm not doing a great job. It's been really hard. This is not the time to be in Five of Pentacles energy, you know, which is the lack mentality, because it's manifestation city. I think for one here, that's what this Jupiter is. When it, it's about well, the 29 goes to zero, Pisces. I tell, I just buy car. Uh, if you're like in America, I'm in Mexico. I don't know what they do here. I swear to God, but. Two years, I still can't figure out a lot of things. But if you can just buy, like, a lot of ticket for a buck, yeah, fuck, buy a lot of ticket, <laughs> you know. I just get this feeling, I mean, there's a, you know, it's all based on us, man. It's like, if we've been out there, you know, doing bad shit forever, it might not go so well. But for most of us, you've been trying, doing the best we can. You know, we haven't, you know, done the absolute best, but we're slogging along. You know, this is where Jupiter could come in and just lay some shit down on you, man. Like Oprah, you know, like, you know, look under the seat. Oh, shit, you want a car, bitch? That kind of energy. Um, so it's like a, it's a, it's just a bad time to be, never a good time to be in this energy, but it's a bad time. It's like um, Venus just going retrograde. It's drilling in, making us go deep. Look at all of this relationship energy. And, you know, it wouldn't be surprised to see this come up, you know. Because uh, it can be a tough time. All that could get related into financial difficulties and uncertainty and go into all the social ramifications of COVID and everything that might come with that and health. But uh, wow. Uh, so, an intense reading. Uh, do let me know what you think of it. If you can think of any platform to share this with, please do. Please uh, appreciate the help. Do like and share and uh, if you haven't, please subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you, guys.